Having made her debut as one of the playable Vault Hunters in Borderlands the pre-sequel, Aurelia Hammerlock is the sister of Sir Alastair Hammerlock, whom we first met in Borderlands 2. While we know next to nothing about it, the Hammerlock family ran a very profitable business. Though due to Alistair's declaration of it being blood money, it is safe to assume that it was not by very ethical means. As kids, Aurelia found enjoyment out of torturing her brother, primarily emotionally and psychologically. Such an example can be expressed in the echolog, The Lizard. Once, when we were children, my sister and I found an extremely rare lizard in the woods near our home. A magnificent specimen. Aurelia wanted to keep it as a pet, but my sister has never been one for cultivating life, shall we say. I nurtured it in secret, despite her insisting the lizard was hers. I labored to build it a proper habitat, natural flora, the right balance of water and sunlight, ample food, of course. But one day I returned to find the lizard dead. The water level was too high. There were scratch marks on the glass where it had clawed madly for air. And you blamed yourself. I did, at the time. Only later did I realize what my sister had done. She had left a block of ice in the habitat to slowly melt, forcing the lizard to scramble ever higher until it was too late. Had she simply wanted to kill it, she could have done so. But that's not her way. Aurelia wanted me to believe that I was to blame. This obviously caused the relationship between these two to be strained quite heavily. As she grew up and Alistair wanted nothing to do with any part of the family, Aurelia was the one who inherited their family fortune, becoming CEO of the family business, but not really having much to do with what was going on with it. It is important to note that dialogue suggests that she has a hatred for her mother, but nothing specifically points to why this is the case. After Mama sold me the family business, she decided to take it easy. In this context, easy apparently consists of going from planet to planet, subjugating workers, killing people, and generally continuing to run mining operations behind my back. All the same to me as long as all the checks keep coming, but it's awfully bloody boring to be a CEO with piss all to do. Wonder if Mama is dead yet? No, still feeling a deep sense of irritation. Her heart still beats. Now being an extremely wealthy socialite, Aurelia took up the hobby of hunting. It is an interesting hobby because her brother followed this career path, largely out of a profound respect for wildlife, but she does it almost in the exact opposite way, which annoys Alistair, which is probably why she does it. She actually came to this idea while jogging through her mansion. Well, I was jogging through my turbo mansion, horribly bored, and it occurred to me that killing hundreds of living things might be amusing. Et voila. As revealed in her own personal echo log, she eventually made her way to Pandora, where her brother was at, and asked to stay in his abode while she was there, which didn't sit too well with him. Hello, dear sister. I'm sure that necrotic lump of tissue you call a heart skipped a beat when I opened your condescending message. As pleased as I would be to have your emotionless, creature-murdering presence in my home, I must respectfully decline your request to be housed in my mobile surveying platform during your quote-unquote holiday on Pandora. Indeed, I would be delighted if we never came within a thousand miles of one another. By all means, spend some of Mum and Dad's blood money on a ticket. By all means, indiscriminately murder the wondrous creatures I came here to study. By all means, get your butlers to carry you around in a palonquin sewed from the skins of crying children. But don't you dare presume to be worthy of my presence after the decades of teasing and torment you put me through. I want nothing to do with you! Sincerely, Sir Hammerlock! Her ventures then took her to Pandora's moon instead, Elpis. It is here that she ran into the other group of vault hunters, Wilhelm, Nisha, Claptrap, Timothy, and Athena, who were all hired by Jack. With really nothing else better to do, she decides just to tag along as she didn't need the money but was more intrigued by the hunt. And this is where the events of the pre-sequel take place. Despite what many would think, Aurelia, similarly to the likes of Athena and Timothy, doesn't quite approve of what Jack is doing and what he's becoming. While she is, by her own words, a stone-cold bitch, she questions many of the things that he does. Here are a few examples now. I don't feel particularly enthused about this. So, what did, uh... What did everyone think about that bit with the airlock? 
Even at the end of the game, she says that Jack should kill himself due to the monster he's become. Right, that's it. I've had my fun, Jack, and so I shall leave you with this one final piece of wisdom that your plasticine face will surely ignore. Kill yourself. Darling, I'm evil. Let's not kid ourselves. But you, you're just something else entirely. You're far better off opening the throat beneath that ludicrously soul-patched face than suffer the bloody karma I imagine the universe has in store for you. And with that, I shall bid you adieu. Additionally, your breath smells like farts. After helping Jack open the vault and subsequently assisting in obtaining the H-Source, Aurelia promptly leaves Jack to his own fate while she continues onward in her random hunts across the galaxy. Fast forward in time, and Lilith gets a lead to where Aurelia is located, and she sends both Axton and Gage to capture her. For crimes of helping Handsome Jack on Elpis, she wants to bring all those who helped him to be executed. This plan, however, would hit a snag when Athena is captured but is subsequently saved by the Watcher, warning they need all the Vault Hunters they can get. This causes Lilith to call off the hit on Aurelia and instead capture her and bring her to Sanctuary. It is on the planet of Epta that Axton and Gage take her in to their annoyance. Hello, Sanctuary! Guess who's back from hunting vaults on other planets? Did you miss us? And I'm the nerd? I mean, what's the deal here, you guys? First, Lilith is like, hunt the vault on Epta. And then she's like, don't kill the other vault hunters, bring back the one chick you found! War is coming! Ooh, you brought back a new vault hunting buddy? I wanna meet her. No, you don't. Aurelia is the meanest. What's all this about Athena and some guardian and war? Um, I'm Athena. I was relating to present company the story of how Jack rose to power. We don't know what then followed her capture, if she was explained about what the Watcher said or what. But it didn't take long before she was released and back to her own shenanigans. In between the six-year events of Borderlands 2 and 3, a lot would happen. Importantly, the Children of the Vault came into being and began building up a following so they can obtain all the Vault Keys. This would become important soon. So on her everlasting quest to annoy her brother, Alistair would begin dating Wainwright Jacobs, who is the heir to the Jacobs Corporation. And so, she attempts to purchase the company from Montgomery Jacobs. She is declined many times, never giving up believing that it can be purchased for any price. Montgomery Jacobs? You've been ignoring my offers. I don't like being ignored. Get off my echo, woman! Can't you hear I'm in the middle of morose ruminations? Oh, Monty. May I call you Monty? I'm going to call you Monty. You've been a CEO long enough to know that you can get anything, provided you're willing to pay the price for it. Jacobs ain't for sale, you harpy! I beg to differ. Inevitably, it becomes clear that she won't be able to flat out buy the company and she would instead have to resort to more shady methods. Undeniably, with her expansive reach, she came to learn of the COV. Rumors spoke of a hidden vault key on the planet that the Jacobs were keeping secret, and so the Calypsos worked to cause unrest amongst the people. Aurelia caught wind of this and saw the opportunity to gain control of the Jacobs Corporation. She reached out to Troy Calypso and laid with him for extra persuasion, which worked wonders, though it was something she didn't want public. Wow. <laughs> that thing you do with the ice is, uh... Wow. Are you, uh... Sure, you're, you're not a siren? Oh, no, nothing so magical. Just nanotech and years of experience. So, have we got a deal? Oh, yeah, no, totally. Uh, we torture Montgomery Jacobs to death for the deed to his company, you find us his vault key, and you get to be CEO. Gotta say, I'm surprised you'd pull one over on your brother. Seems kinda... Cold? Troy, dear, you'll figure this out eventually. Family is just another word for war, and the sister always wins. Now, show me again what you can do with your new powers. Gladly, Baroness. <laughs> Troy and Tyrene would go on to kill Montgomery while he was buttering a biscuit. The deed was transferred over to Aurelia, and she took new refuge in the Jacobs estate. It didn't take her long before she either killed and or fired all of the Jacobs workers. Most who were killed knew about her sleeping with Troy or were too loyal to the Jacobs that they wouldn't say anything about the vault key. I know you've been recording me, Baldrin. Now, before I fire you, tell me, where did Montgomery Jacobs hide the vault key? I haven't the faintest clue 
what you mean, Baroness. I've served four generations in Jacob's Manor with dignity and honor, and I intend to stay right here. Unless you want it going public that you've gotten into bed with... Sadly, we're in a bit of a hiring freeze at the moment. And this is where the events of Borderlands 3 take place. When the new set of Vault Hunters come to the planet in search of the Vault Key, Aurelia attempts to pay them off to leave the planet and abandon their search. This obviously doesn't work, and instead she ends up getting tricked while the Crimson Raiders manage to decode the riddle Montgomery left behind. Before they're capable of doing this, however, she intercepts both her brother and Wainwright, where she intends on cutting off the only remaining Jacob's bloodline she has left where she shoots her brother and faces off against the Vault Hunters. And it is here that Aurelia winds up getting killed, losing her life. Honestly, despite being a self-proclaimed stone-cold bitch, I think the fate of her was out of the blue. I think she was far from an irredeemable character, and the choice to kill her I think was uncalled for. Sure, she liked making her brother's life a living hell, killing animals he cares for, and essentially just spitting in his face in literally every way possible, but that was part of her charm. She was a bad person, and she knew she was a bad person, and she didn't care. She clearly didn't have any intention on killing her brother, since she shot him in a non-lethal spot when she had free range to kill him if she wanted. Even in Borderlands the pre-sequel, she has a voice line upon death where she apologizes to her brother. Sorry, Alistair. We don't know what she was apologizing for, but clearly she was sorry about something. Some other fun facts about Aurelia is that she owned a planet, though we don't know which one it was. Lady Hammerlock, I own a planet. It's not a big deal. She was also fluent in multiple languages. No, you misunderstood me. As a member of the bourgeoisie, I speak many languages. But for now, that does it for the history of Aurelia Hammerlock. If there are any other characters you'd like to see me do the history of, then be sure to let me know in the comments below. And until next time, I'll see you in the next video.